From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hiya there, Johnny. This is your old pal, Lefty. Lefty? Well, sure. You remember. Lefty Stemper. Huh? You know, down here in Virtue. Virtue? V-I-R-G-U. Virtue. South Carolina. Oh, sure. Yeah. You remember. Me and the boys, we occupied this caraway plantation yeah. down here on the P.D. River. Well, sure, of course. Listen, are you having trouble again with old man Caraway? Oh, no, sir. Not a bit. And you know how we stopped them, me and the boys, from making trouble for us? Oh, Lefty. We bought them out, that's how. <laughs> yeah, we give them 100 Gs for the place, cash money. Now we own a whole entire plantation. Well, good for you. But now what's your problem? Well, Johnny, we fixed this place up real nice since you've seen it. You know, we spent a lot of dough on it. So? So we want to buy a lot of new insurance on it. Oh, well then hop on over to Georgetown and see your old friend Joe Picatello about it. Old friend, huh? After all, he's your insurance agent. Yeah, is he? Well, sure, of course he is. Didn't he sell you all the other insurance you... Lefty, has something happened to Joe? Yeah, only I don't know what it is. What do you mean? Well, that's just it. I don't know. I, I talked to him on the phone, asked him to come out here. He says, okay. But he don't come. You think somebody's knocked him off? Then I call him again. He says, okay, again. He'll be right over. But he still don't come. Well, have you gone over to Georgetown to see him, to see what's the matter? Five, six, maybe even half a dozen times. But every time he ain't there. Lefty, I don't get it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's something wrong about it, Johnny. And if I was you, I'd come down here and find out. You know something? I think you're right. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance Company Home Office, New York, New York. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the virtuous mobster matter. Expense account item one, $7.85, train to New York City and taxi to the office of Continental Insurance Company. Fortunately, my contact there, Ben Orloff, was in. Come in, Mr. Dollar, come in. Thanks. How are you? Sit down. Thanks. Now, Mr. Orloff... Wait a minute. Uh, Don't tell me you never received that check for your services down in South Carolina. Oh, yes, I got that. Why, I had that mailed out to you nearly two months ago. Yes, I said I got it. I, Eh? uh... Oh, oh, Good. Incidentally, I thoroughly enjoyed your report on that case. The village of Virtue matter, you called it? Uh, yes, Though so why know. a group of ex-gangsters should decide to settle in a town called Virtue, I'll never understand. Well, they... Were they really behaving themselves, as your report indicated, or had they been using that old plantation for a sort of hideout? Their records have been clean down there for over 20 years now. Is that so? Well... <laughs> well, uh, maybe the answer to organized crime is to give all those fellows a nice, quiet plantation to live on. Yes. Though I must say that when our agent down there, Joseph Picatello... It's about Joe that I've come to talk I to. must say that I was a bit concerned when I found Joe had sold policies to characters like Lefty Stemper and Bully Magoon and Flippy Lackovic. Mr. Orloff... Why, those were the very sort of men that Thomas E. Dewey chased out of New York when he was D.A. some years ago. Mr. Orloff... That was before Dewey became governor, you know. So naturally, I... Uh... What were you going to say about Joe Picatelli? Have you heard from Joe recently? No, no, I don't think I have, now that you mention it. Because I just talked over the phone. Wait. You must understand one thing, Mr. Dollar. Oh, what's that? Our office down there in Georgetown is probably the smallest one we have in the whole country. Joe really doesn't handle much business for us, you know. Yes, I understand. I understood that when I talked to him in April. If it weren't for those those mobsters over in Virtue... mobsters Mr. Orland. Well, if it wasn't for them and some of the townspeople to whom we've issued policies, I'd... Mr. Dollar... Has something happened to Joe Picatello? That's what I want to find out. Because now that I think about it... Excuse me. Miss Bailey? Yes, Mr. Orloff? Did you ever get a reply on the Harmon policy from Mr. Picatello in our Georgetown office? No, sir. I've written Mr. Picatello several times now. Thank you. Dollar, we wrote Joe about that Harmon matter over four weeks ago. Well, didn't it occur to you to phone him and find out why he hasn't answered you? But it involves such a small policy that... Uh, yes. Perhaps I'd better try to call him. Miss Bailey? Wait. Yes? Uh, nothing. What? I said nothing. 
Well, Mr. Dollar? Well, Mr. Orloff, if something has happened to Joe Picatello... Well, look, instead of spreading the alarm, how about if I quietly run on down there? But have you reason to believe something wrong has happened to him? Only from what his clients down there at the plantation have told me over the phone. You... you think perhaps some of his old gangland enemies have got to him? After 20 years? I don't know. But if you'll okay my expense account, I'll go down there and see. Well, now, Mr. Dollar... And if you won't, I'll go down there anyway. But there's the danger, too. This might be a very dangerous... Let me... Let me hear from you as soon as you can, Mr. Dollar. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Donald, it's your pouring, isn't it? Can you see all right? Oh, yeah, I can see. Those windshield wipers are operating with mechanical perfection. You notice there are no more streaks either since I put on the new rubber blade. You know, I think every driver should have his windshield wipers in good order. It's much safer. It would be much safer if everyone would slow down during wet weather like my husband is doing right now. <laughs> Just being cautious, Reba. We don't want an accident in this downpour. We don't want an accident anytime. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, the experts say that accidents just don't happen. Something causes accidents, and that cause can be prevented. Uh, by the way, dear, in what kind of weather do you think most accidents occur? Oh, I'd say in rain or snowy weather or slippery weather when visibility is impaired. That's the wrong answer, dear. Wrong? Hey, are, you, are you serious? Statistics show that eight out of ten accidents occur when the weather is clear or with a cloudy overcast. Hmm. Are you positive? I wonder why. But, oh, here's our house here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, you sit right here, Reba. I'll get out with the umbrella, and then I'll come around and open your door. All right, honey. I wonder why. Wonder why what? Why eight out of ten accidents happen in clear weather. Oh, well, I don't know for sure, Sergeant. But I do know that you drove very carefully tonight in the rain. Thanks. <laughs> now, if everyone drove as carefully during clear, dry weather, there'd be less accidents, I'm sure. Yeah, that must be it. People automatically get cautious in the rain and snow. Hmm. Too bad they don't stay that way in good weather. You will, won't you? I mean, drive safely in good weather, too? I promise. Oh, oh that's my Donald. That's my doll. <laughs> Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the virtuous mobster matter. Expense account item two, $28 even, transportation and incidentals, New York City to Georgetown, South Carolina. It was late when I pulled into the prosperous little southern community, and it was dark, pitch dark. Item three, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. Item four, 70 cents for a sandwich and a Coke at an all-night diner. Then I drove over to Joe Picatello's on a side street near the park. The small frame building that served as both office and living quarters for Joe was dark. But in the hope he might be asleep in his little apartment up above, I knocked. No answer. Until I was about to turn and go back to my car. It was the sound of a door slamming somewhere inside. But still no light showed. I knocked again. Then, faintly, I heard footsteps approaching. But why hadn't Joe turned on a light in there? Yeah. What do you want? Joe. Yeah? Joe, open up. It's Johnny Dollar. Johnny who? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator, you know. Investigator? That's what you said? Are you kidding? What's the matter with you, pal? Open up. Yeah. Sure. Hiya, Joe. What's the idea of no lights in here? You forget to pay your bill or something? Maybe. What do you want? What? Investigator, you said, Willie. Did you hear that? Willie? Yeah, I heard. Hey, what is this? Don't move. Huh? Oh, oh, no, you don't. Oh. 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 All right, Willie, I got his gun. I hit him again. Yeah. Again. Once more. Oh. 
Okay, okay. There he is. I'd like a light. Yeah. Well, what do you want I should do with him now? Huh? You crazy, Willie? You mean you don't... No! Okay, but if I blast him here, it's going to make a lot of noise. And if anybody... Yeah. Listen. Hey, it's a car. Coming down the street. Investigator, he said. So he wouldn't be working alone. Come on, out the back way. But I know who's going Shut to stay here. Shut up, let's get out of here. On, Lefty. Well, maybe Joe's went to bed, if he's there. He didn't answer the phone when you c c called him. Listen, Flippy, Johnny Dollar told me I should come down here and look for Joe myself. So come on, we'll see. Oh, oh, well, whatever you say, Lefty. Only I th thought that uh, Johnny was coming down here himself to... <clears throat> huh. Hey, look, this door's open. Yeah, yeah you, you look what, what, what I stepped on. Joe. Joe, what happened to you? That, that, that ain't Joe. It's, it's Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Hey, you're right, Flippy. Somebody must... Listen, I'll get away. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, it's me. It's me, Lefty. Lefty? And me, 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 Flippy. Johnny, okay? You all right? Yeah, I... Oh, holy... Who oh, oh, done this to you, Johnny? Yeah, we'll murderize him. Hey, Flippy, turn on some lights. Yeah, yeah, sure. What the hell happened in here? You know who done this to you, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? It, it was... Oh, hey, come here, Flippy. Help me lay him up on the sofa. Uh, sure, sure, easy, easy. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Sure, sure. Here, here now. Yeah. yeah. I know. Johnny, listen to me. Who, Johnny? Who? Yeah, 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 Johnny. I can't believe it, but uh, I could see him in the light from the street. Who? Who? Joe. What? Joe Pigatello. Smokey Pigatello done this to you? Another guy with him. Called him Willie. Willie the Lump? Why? Why did he do it? I don't know. He acted very strange when he came to the door. But I don't get it. He was my pal. He was your pal. And well, Willie the Lump with him. That, that, that's what I don't get. It means he's went back. That's what it means. He's went back to the old racket. Dope smuggling. No, no, no. Yeah, him and Willie the Lump was partners in the old days. But, but th th 20 years, Joe's b b been straight, Lefty. L like you and me and Bully Magoon. Yeah, for 20 years, you and me and Bully, the only guns we ever used was for hunting, for killing snakes, but not no more. What do you mean, Lefty? Joe Pigatello done this to you, Johnny. It means only one thing. There's only one thing we can do. No. He's right, Johnny. No, no, Lefty. Yeah, Johnny. First we take you back to the plantation where you get all right no, again. Oh, no, listen to me. Then we lefty. find Joe Pigatello. Flip and bully and me. No. And when we do... Huh? Well, now, what are you punks doing here, huh? Hey. Joe. That's right. Who'd you expect? And what's the big idea? All right, don't move. Because, Joe, I'm going to blast your head off. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Do you know who said, every individual in society has certain powers, rights, and privileges which no other individual can justly abridge or destroy? Those words were written by Noah Webster, the man who compiled America's first great dictionary. Mr. Webster knew that if the country which he had seen come into being were to succeed... The rights of the individual have to be protected. Each person is entitled to certain basic rights, powers, and privileges which must not be taken away because of the whim of someone with greater power. In the United States, the individual is important regardless of his wealth, power, or position. The importance of the individual is closely linked to the American tradition. Remember the words of Noah Webster. They are part of your American heritage. The rights and privileges of the individual must be preserved. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Virtuous Mobster Matter. To say the atmosphere was tense there in Joe Pigatello's office in Georgetown, South Carolina, would be the understatement of the week. After the beating I'd taken from the ex-gangster and one of his pals, my old friends Lefty and Flippy had come in and had found me there. And they couldn't understand why Joe had done this to me. 
Unless... It means he's went back. That's what it means. Went back to the rackets. Oh, Willie, the lump was with him. Him and Willie was partners in the old days. Dope, not cottage. So the two of them swore to get you. And then suddenly we looked up to see someone standing in the doorway. It's Joe. It was Joe Picatello. That's right. Now, who'd you expect? And what's the All right, like? don't move. Because, Joe, I'm going to blast your head off. Oh, now, put that thing down, Lefty. Don't move. What is it, Slippy? A gag or something? Is it a gag what you've done to Johnny Dollar? Johnny. I said one move and I'll give it to you. Johnny. Turn around, Joe, or I'll shoot you in the back, you dirty... What did they do to you, Johnny? Listen, Joe. Lefty. Flippy, I'll kill you for this. What are you talking about, you dirty wait, rat? Wait, Lefty. Johnny's my pal. Like you used to be before you went back in the rackets. Went back in the rackets? Yeah, yeah, with that uh, dope hound, little Willie the Lump. What do you know about Willie the Lump? Plenty. Now that you're back with him. You're crazy. It's no good, Joe, because Johnny recognized you. You and Willie the Lump when you wiped them over. And I tell you that I had... 20 no... years, you and Bully and Flippy and me, we showed we could do it straight. We could be respectable. Me and the boys at the plantation, you down here. But now you're spoiled. You ruined it for all of us. Look, will you listen? So don't move. We made a deal. You and me and the boys. 20 years ago, if anybody slips, anybody breaks up our respectable life, he gotta go. Was that the deal? Yeah, yeah, that was the deal. But you, you don't know what you're talking about when you say I'm going back to... All the... right, so you, you lousy scum, you not only go back, you do this to Johnny Dollar. My friend, the guy who Lefty. believed in us. Lefty. So for that, you gotta go. Lefty, listen. Now, Joe. Right. Lefty. Give me your gun, Lefty. Uh, no, Johnny. Th th that was the deal. You ever use a gun on a man, you'll go up for the rest of your life. Johnny, it's for you I'm killing him. Hand it over, Lefty. Okay, thanks. You see, it it wasn't Joe who worked me over. What? I thought it was. It, it looked like him. It, it sounded like then him. Then it was him. Look at his hands, his face, his clothes. Is this the man I fought with in here five minutes ago? Sure, maybe I did get the worst of it with two of them on top of me. But believe me, I cut them up some, too. He's right, Lefty. Yeah. Yeah, but then I don't... Look, if it wasn't him... The twin. The twin. You're right, Lefty. It must be the twin. The, the twin here? All right, boys. Let me in on it, too, yeah, would you? Shep Locke or the twin, they called him. That's what the law called him. Call him and Joe the twins. Because they looked like each other. They talked like each other. <laughs> they was always the alibi for each other. But, but, but what's Shep Locke doing here? I, I I can't tell you, Flippy. Not yet. All right, Joe. All right. I believe you. About not working over Johnny here. Because of what he says about, well, about you and me, it must up. But if you and Shep are back in the racket... I'm not, Lefty. That's straight. No. All right, then tell me. Where you been? I, I, I can't tell you. Three, four weeks now, we don't know where you are. The insurance company don't know where you are. Well? I, I can't tell you. Now, now listen. Oh, uh, you listen. You listen. If Shep and Willie have been here, they'll be coming back. Why? Yeah, Joe, why? I can't tell you. I, I, I can't tell you. Huh? All right. Listen. We're listening, Joe. The, the Secret Service. Huh? Well, after those killings up in Baltimore. During that smuggling job? Yeah, Johnny. They knew the twins, Shep Locker and Willie. Well, the boys in Washington knew they did it. But they didn't know where to find them. Well, go on, Joe. So they spread the word. Uh, the Secret Service spread the word. Yeah. That I knew where Shep and Willie were. That, that I would lead them to them. You knew where they was, huh? No, but the law boys knew that would flush them out. Get Shep and Willie out looking for me. Gunning for me. And the Secret Service didn't keep you undercover? Yeah, until today, back in Washington. But I talked to you on your phone right here. Oh, the line was rigged through to Washington. You said until today, Joe. Yeah, because Shep and Willie didn't show. The law boys had to make them show. So then they sent you here as living bait? Yeah. And they passed the word that you'd be here? That's it, Johnny. That's why Shep and Willie were waiting here when you came. That's why they'll come back now that I'm here. Boy... You stuck your neck out for the sake of going straight. I couldn't help myself. The, the Secret Service rigged it on me. Guy named Phillips. But now you're all in it. So, Flippy, turn out the lights. Yeah, and let's get out of here. Oh, no. What? Oh, listen, we was crooks, but never killers. But it's killers that's coming to get Joe. What do you mean, Lefty? But they won't. And they won't get you, Johnny. Sorry, Lefty, I can't move. But then we're staying. For you and Joe. Yeah, right. So turn out the lights, Flippy. You're too late, boy. Shep. The, the twin. That's right. Your old pal, Shep Larko. Keep a rat on him, Willie. Don't worry, Shep. Investigator, huh, Dollar? 
Only a secret service, ain't it? Yes, sir. I knew we should have killed you when we had your dollar. But we thought these boys driving up was reinforcements. Ha! <laughs> reinforcements. We should have known the Secret Service wasn't that bright. All right, Willie, frisk him while I keep this gun on him. Sure. You know, none of you trying to... Not Dollar. We got his gun. Oh. Okay. Just what do you intend doing, Shep? They're clean, Shep. What do you think? All right. Joe gets it first. Put your gun up close so it don't make no noise. Go ahead, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> You got them both. And I thought you couldn't move. Yeah, but, but boy. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks. Thank Lefty for giving me his gun when I asked for it, Joe. Oh. Hey, look. Any of you guys know a good doctor? Yeah, I've said it before and I say it again. In this insurance business, you never know what you'll run into. Expense account total, including a flock of medical expenses and the trip back to Hartford, $174 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Gene Tatum, Jack Crucian, Les Tremaine, Billy Hallop, Frank Gerstle, and Gil Stratton, Jr. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. Johnny Dollar has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.